Please be seated. Okay, do we have another witness for the state? Tristan, this is Judge Bitter. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. You're going to be called as a witness to testify, so you have to promise to tell the truth and take an oath. Do you understand what that means? Yes, Your Honor. I want you to raise your right hand right now. Do you swear that the testimony you give here today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor. State your name and spell your first name, please. My first name is Tristan, my last name is Mullis, my first name is spelled T-R-Y-S-T-E-N, my last name is Mullis and it's spelled M-U-L-L-I-S. Okay. Counsel, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Tristan, what is your date of birth? September 3rd, 2005. And what, where do you currently live? In Ankeny. Who do you live in Ankeny with? My grandmother and my step grandfather. Tristan, what grade are you in? Eighth grade. And do you like sports? Yes. What kind of sports do you like? I like to play football. And do you have a favorite football team? Yeah, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Um, what else do you like to do in your free time? I like to hunt. I like to fish. I like to go on a four wheeler ride. I like to hang out with friends. Tristan, what is your mom's name? Amy. And what's her last name? Mollis. And what kind of things did your mom like to do? She liked to do puzzles. She liked to um, help out with the Delaware County Park producers. Um, she liked to help people out. Prior to living in Ankeny with your grandparents, where did you live? In Earlville, or outside of Earlville. And what was your address? Um, I don't know. And did you live on a farm? Yes. Who did you live there with? Um, my mom and dad. And what's your dad's name? Todd. And did you live, do you have any siblings? Yes. What are your siblings' names? Taylor and Wyatt. How old are Taylor and Wyatt? Taylor is 11 and Wyatt is 9. When you were living on the farm, is there anything that specifically you were in charge of or you liked to do? I had um, chickens that I took care of. And um, what are some of the, how did you take care of those chickens? I fed them, watered them. I picked up the eggs when it needed to be picked up. Did you actually sell the eggs to the customers? Yes. And how much did you sell them for? $1.50 per dozen of eggs. Were you able to keep that money? Yes. Now, what kinds of things did you do with your mother? Um, she took me shopping a lot, like for school clothes. Um, we went to some, um, Iowa Hawkeye football games. Um, you know, just stuff like that. When you lived on the farm, who worked on the farm? We all did. And when you say we all did, who do you mean? Um, both my parents, me and my brother and sister. And what kind of things did your mom do uh, around the farm? Um, she kept the paperwork for the uh, chemicals. Um, she ordered feed for the uh, hogs that we have. Um, she just do a lot of paperwork. And what kind of things would your dad do on the farm? He'd do the uh, labor work, like the chores and the um, field work. Did doing all the farm work take up a lot of your dad's time? Yeah. And you did you help a lot on the farm? Yes. Sometimes did you actually take time off school to help on the farm? Yes. And you, back in 2008, I'm sorry, 2018, uh, what was your relationship like with your dad? Close. What kind of things would you do with your dad? Um, chores. We would go hunting, fishing, um, go on a four-wheeler ride. We'd farm together, obviously, um, just stuff like that. Did you and your dad talk about how someday the farm would be yours? Yes. 
Did you and your dad also talk about you possibly being homeschooled so you could help even more on the farm? Yes. Now, Tristan, I'd like to direct your attention to November 10th, 2018. Do you remember that day? Yes. Where were you at that morning? Um, in the house. And who, what, what's the first thing you remember that day? Um, just waking up. And where did you go after you woke up? Um, to my room to get my clothes on. And then where'd you go? Um, went upstairs. Did you at some point leave the house? Yes. Who did you leave with? My dad. And when you left the house, who was at home? Um, my mom and my brother and my sister. Where did you go that morning? Um, to the other hog site where we had hogs that needed to be taken care of. Tristan, tell me a little bit of the farm that you lived on. Um, we have a house. Um, we got a few grain bins that storage uh, either um, corn or soybeans. Uh, we have a shop basically where we do all the maintenance on the equipment and the vehicles. Um, we have a, uh, actually a storage shed for those vehicles. Um, we have two hog buildings and that's pretty much it. Ms. Hughes, can you grab the microphone from Mr. Firehelm and set it up by you so everybody can make sure they hear you? Tristan, would it be fair to say that you had two hog barns on the farm? Yeah, at my house, yes. And you had indicated a minute ago that that morning you left at some point to go to a separate site? Yes. Would that be off of your farm? Yes. And whose farm did you go to? Um, it was not really on a farm. It was kind of in the middle of a cornfield uh, along the highway, but it was next to my Uncle Mike's uh, place. And who did you go with that morning? My dad. When you left that morning, who was left at, the, at home on the farm? Uh, my mom, my brother, my sister. Did you and your dad come back to your house or to your farm? Yes. And where did you go then? We went back to the house. And was it still your mom, Taylor, and Wyatt inside the house? Yes. What did you do then? Uh, we ate breakfast. Who made you breakfast? My mom. What was your mom doing when you first walked in before she made you breakfast? Um, she did not um, make breakfast like when we walked in. She had already made it. She would prepared it for us. But when we walked in, she was working on a puzzle. And who was she working on that puzzle with? She was alone. She was by herself. What did you do then after you went inside? Uh, we ate breakfast, you know, talked about how the day was going to lay out and just, I don't know. Back in November 2018, was there anybody besides you, your mom, your dad, and your brother and sister that worked on your farm specifically? Yes. Who else? My uncle, Mike, um, my grandpa Leroy, and that's probably about it. So it was just family? Yes. Was there any hired workers that worked on your farm at that time? No. After you ate breakfast, what did you do? Um, we put our plates in the sink and we were, we went outside. Who did you go outside with? My dad. And where did you go when you went outside? To the uh, hog building. Did your mom eventually, did your mom at some point come outside? Yes. And approximately, do you know what time you went outside? I can't remember, but I think it was 930. How long after did your mom come outside? About two, three minutes. Do you remember what your mom was wearing that day? Uh, she was wearing a shirt, sweatshirt, a winter coat, and a pair of pants. Now, you said that you and your dad went to the hog barn? Yes. Where did your mom go? To the same one. When you went to the hog barn, what were you doing? Uh, we were preparing the barn for infant uh, pigs. So at that point, were there pigs in the barn? No. So what were you doing inside the hog barn? Um, we, I was carrying heaters. Since it's in the wintertime, it gets cold, and they can get sick and die. So you, we have to carry feeders that, um, or heaters, sorry, uh, heaters that heat the pigs so they can stay warm. What was your dad doing inside the hog barn? He was um, putting down these bars that um, 
imitates a sow so that the pigs don't, they get, um, basically it weans them. Now this hog barn that you were in, can you just describe it to us a little bit? What does it look like? It's kind of an open barn. It's, it's got a roof on it, but, um, it's about, about a hundred, about a football field long. Um, you know, it's got 24 pins in a barn, 12 on each side. Um, there's a small alleyway that you can walk through to get to one end of the barn to the other. Um, it's pretty much, there's feeders in each of the pens that has a water system connected to it. What was your mom doing after she came out to the hog barn? She was um, cleaning uh, light bulb fixtures. And how was she doing that? Um, so she would get on a bucket, a five gallon bucket, and then she would reach up to these, uh, the light bulbs in the ceiling, and there'd be this little glass oval that would go around the light bulb, and it would, um, basically protect the light bulb from being broken and glass discarded on the ground, so sometimes there'd be flies that get in the uh, light fixtures, so she would clean those out. So would it be fair to say that all three of you were doing different things in the barn? Yes. Where were Taylor and Wyatt while the three of you were working in the hog barn? In the house. And was anybody else on the farm? No. What happened then? Um, my mom, uh, she kind of, uh, she, she said she was getting dizzy, and she said that she was bleeding because she had had a surgery a few days prior to that day. And so, you know, we just... You know, she just said that she was dizzy and bleeding, so, um, and then she kind of, like, was getting, she said she was getting really dizzy, so we asked her what was wrong, and she said it was nothing. Now, Tristan, did you see your mom get dizzy, or did she tell you she got dizzy? I saw her get dizzy. What did you see her do? She, uh, kind of, like, had to, like, when she got in a bucket, she had to hold herself from falling off, and she got down, and her legs, she was kind of shaky. What happened then? Um, me and my dad both asked her if she was all right. Did your dad say anything else to your mom at that time? No, not at that time. What did you do then? Uh, we continued working. What happened after that, after you were working? Um, she kind of did the same thing, but, um, this time we told her that maybe it was better off if she didn't, um, if she didn't do that job anymore. Tristan, did you say that to your mom or did your dad say that to your mom? We both, we both did. Did your dad say anything else to your mom? Yes. What did he say? He said, I really don't think it's wise for you to stay out here because, you know, I don't want you falling off and getting hurt. Did your dad ask your mom to do anything else? Yes. What did he ask her to do? Um, so that later that day, after we had gotten done with the uh, hog barn, there was a, um, um, we had to go, um, I think it was feed or water the, I think it was water the chickens and um, we have a, like a it's a tote it's a chemical tote that was um, that was not being used and we put it a hose on it so we could store water in that tote and so we use that for water a water source to carry water to the uh, to the chickens and um, it was in the shop and there was cats in the shop and um, this good loader was also in the shop so we didn't want them running away or you know possibly getting in an accident. So Tristan did your dad say anything to your mom or tell her to do something? Yes. What did he say? He said if you want to help out it would be it would mean a lot to us if you would go get the uh, um, the pet cage that was in a barn. And is that also referred to as like a pet carrier? Yes. And where, do you know where that pet carrier was located? Yes. Where was it located? In the red shed, as we call it. And how far is the red shed from the hog barn that you were in? From the front of the barn, it's about 30 yards. Did your mom actually leave the hog barn? Yes. And this carrier, it's kind of big, correct? Yes. And do you, what would you approximate, well, could you give us an approximation of how much you think that pet carrier weighs? Probably maybe 15, 18 pounds. I'm not sure. And your dad asked your mom to get that after she, after she appeared to be dizzy. Yes. Did your dad tell your mom where to put it after she got it? Yes. Where did he tell her to put it? He said 
They said two things. He said, if you can get it to the shop, that would help. But if you can, if you can't get it, if you can get it out of the barn, that would be also helpful. But if you just can't get it, then just leave it. We'll get it. Now, where specifically in the red shed was that pet carrier located? It was kind of in, on the, against the wall. I want to say it was against the southern wall, something like that. Did you, so you actually saw your mom then leave the hog barn? Yes. What were you doing after your mom left the hog barn? Uh, I continued her job. And what was that? Cleaning the light fixtures. And what was your dad doing? He was doing the same thing that he was doing just when we, you know, before she left. How long were you and your dad in the hog barn together after your mom left? Uh, probably about another hour and 30 minutes. Now, while you were in this barn, you were still working? Yes. And your dad was doing his job or working as well? Yes. At some point, did you lose sight of your dad? Yes. Do you know exactly how long your dad wasn't in your sight? No. The time that you didn't see your dad is all, you obviously didn't see your mother either. Yes. You did not see your mom at that time? Sorry, yes. that was confusing. Yes. yes. While you were in the hog barn working for approximately that hour and a half, did you have a watch on? No. Did you have your phone with you? No. Was there a clock um, inside the hog barn that you were looking at the time? No. Tristan, would it be accurate to say that you don't know how much time you were away from your dad when you were in, when you were working in the hog barn? Yes. Now, Tristan, you swore to tell the truth today, correct? Yes. And as Judge Bitter asked you, you know what that means? Yes. And you're under oath right now? Yes. Now, did you, uh, did you also swear to tell the truth last week when you did a deposition um, to talk about these same things? Yes. And during that deposition, were you asked how, how long you were, your dad was out of your sight? Yes. And during that deposition, you were also under oath? Yes. And during that deposition, you estimated that it was approximately, I'm sorry, approximately. Your, and your Honor, may, I, may we approach? Yes. May I proceed, Judge? Go ahead. Tristan, during that deposition, you, and, you estimated that you were out of your dad's sight for an, approximately an hour, I'm sorry, one minute and 40 seconds. Yes. Was that accurate when you gave that testimony? No. After the deposition, did you meet with your attorney and did your dad say or, or tell you to do anything? Um, yes. What did he say to you? He just said, um, you know, maybe it was too heavy or she couldn't get it or like you know because she was on a weight restriction so we just thought that you know maybe it was just you know one of those things where you just can't do it yourself so he just told me to get it myself now let me just ask you a few questions Trist Tristan about what you just said you said your mom was on a weight restriction yes and what do you mean by that it means uh, she since she had the surgery as I uh, earlier um, said that she uh, couldn't, um, she wasn't, I guess she wasn't recommended to lift over 10 pounds, is what she told me. Now, after you were working in the barn for approximately an hour and a half, did you, you and your dad had that conversation about how you didn't see the pet carrier by the shop? Yes. Where did that conversation with you and your dad take place? Um, there is an office, or it's like, a, yeah, it's like an office in the barn that we were working in, and it's where, you know, all the paperwork for the both barns go for, you know, the pigs, the days, and stuff like that, and just the storage area. Now, did your dad ask you to go and check the red shed? Yeah. And did he ask you to go look for your mom or to go look for the pet carrier? Go look for the pet carrier. Where did you go then? I went to the barn. 
And when you say barn, that's also the red shed. Yes, yes. So sometimes you guys call it the old red barn or the old shed. Yes. Where was your dad when you went into the shed? He was um, changing his boots that he had put on um, because we like that we it's they say it's wise to change boots so you don't spread disease throughout the barns. So he, we were both wearing different boots, and he um, had to fill out some paperwork. <laughs> Did you then walk to the red shed or red barn? Yes. At that point, was anybody else on the farm? No. Where did you go then? I went to the barn. What did you see when you walked in? Uh, my mom. And where was your mom at? She was just inside the door. And what position was she in? She was kind of on her hands and knees, face down. What did you do? Um, I yelled for my dad. Did you see anything that was protruding or sticking out of your mom's body? Yes. What did you see? A uh, corn rake. And where was that at in relation to your mom's body? In, in her center back, probably, somewhere around there. Did you, was, at that point, was your mom responsive? No. Did you do anything to see if she was? Yes. What did you do? Um, I checked for a pulse on her um, neck and her arm and I put my finger or my index and my middle finger under her nose to see if she was you know if there was breath. Now at that point I think you indicated that's when you called for your dad? Yes. What happened then? Um, he started running. At that point did you or your dad call 911? Yes. Right then you did? No, no, not then, no. When you say you went and got the truck, what do you mean, what did you actually do? Uh, went and um, picked or got in the truck and drove it over to where they were. And what was your dad doing then? He was helping mom out of the barn. And how was he doing that? Uh, he was kind of had a hand over his both of his shoulders, kind of like the army carry. And so did you actually see your dad? What did you do then after you pulled the truck up? I got out of it, and I uh, saw her, and I got really, like, um, you know, I kind of got lightheaded. And um, then my dad just told me to snap out of it, and we got, or I got the door open for him, and I sat in the passenger seat, and she sat on my lap, and we drove off to the hospital. The truck, yes. I'm sorry, the truck. And you were in the front passenger seat? Yes. And at that point, where was your mom? She was on top of me. And would it be fair to say, was your mom bleeding? Yes. And your dad started driving? Yes. While your mom was on top of you and your dad was driving, at any point did you see your mom become responsive? <laughs> Did your, when your dad started driving, um, shortly after he started driving, did he do anything? He called 911. What happened then? Um, the operator told him to pull over in like, uh, so he pulled over in a, and pulled over in, um, it was like an area where a house is being built and nobody was there, so we just pulled over. What happened after you guys pulled over? Um, we got her out of the car, and the operator, t or the truck, I'm sorry, and the operator told us to um, uh, give CPR. And did and your, I'm sorry, did your dad do that? Yes. Did police and, ambul and an ambulance arrive? Yes. And what happened after they arrived? Um, they started doing chest compressions, and they loaded her into the ambulance and drove her off to the hospital. Did anybody else other than the police and paramedics um, arrive where you guys were at on the side of the road? Yes. Who else came or sh showed up? Um, it, was, it was by sheer coincidence, but a few friends did. Where did you go then after your mom got put in the ambulance? Uh, we went back to my house. When you say we, who were you with? Um, one of our friends. And do you, do you recall his name? Yes. What was his name? Michael Krogman. And is Michael Krogman a neighbor or a friend? Yes. And he actually drove you back to your house? Yes. Was it just the two of you in the car? Yeah, the truck, yes. I'm sorry, the truck. When you got back, or I'm sorry, you drove in the truck with Mike Krogman, did anybody else follow you back to your farm? Um, I don't remember. 
At some point, did, the, did some police officers arrive? Yes. And did you speak with those officers? Yes. Did you show them the area where you found your mom? Yes. Now, this area where you found your mom, can you just describe it a little bit more, please? Um, well, um, there's a door. There's a sli two sliding doors. Uh, you know, there's chemical totes in there. There was an old wagon in there. It's kind of narrow, you know. No, they I apologize. The The area where you found your mom, is that the same area where the pet carrier is? It, yeah, basically. Well, you actually have to, where you found your mom is right, if I have this right, right when you walk in the doors to your left is where your mom was. Yes. And your mom, you indicated, was on her hands and knees face down. Yes. And you would actually have to walk a little bit further and turn in order to see where the pet carrier is. Yes. Did you then talk with the police and, and indicate to them where you found your mom? Yes. Now, Tristan, after this happened, that day, you went to the hospital. Yes. And would it be fair to say that this was a very traumatic experience for you? Yes. You indicated earlier that you actually felt like you almost were going to pass out when you found your mom? Yes. And obviously, I mean, what were you feeling after you found your mom? I uh, just kind of freaked out, and I was, you know, the my anxiety level was 0 to 100 in about a split second. Now, you spoke to police, that the uh, sheriff, that day at the hospital, right? Yes. And they asked you a little bit about what happened that day? Yes. And you told them at that time that you were with your dad the whole time? Yes. You also talked to um, Scott Rieger from uh, the Department of Criminal Investigations. He came to your school a few days later and talked to you? Yes. And he also asked you if you were with your dad the whole time? Yes. And you said yes. Yes. And lastly, you also talked to a forensic interviewer at the Child Protection Services a couple months after this happened. Is that right? Yeah. And you also told that interviewer that you were with your dad the whole time. Yes. But what you're telling us today and what you told us at the deposition is that there was a period of time that you were not with your dad. Yes. Now, after this happened on November 10th, 2018, where were you living? Um, with my dad and my two siblings. And were you living at home on your farm, or did you stay somewhere else for a little bit? Uh, we stayed somewhere else for a little bit. And who did you stay with? Uh, my dad's parents. And would that be your grandma and grandpa Mullis? Yes. And where, um, where do they live in relation to your farm? About maybe a couple miles away. Now, Tristan, I just want to go back a, a little bit and ask you a few more questions about the day that this happened. When you first found your mom, were you able to see your mom's face or um, her, her front side when you first found her? No. Oh. And in the area that your mom was found, what's in that specific area? Uh, it's just like a walkway, and there's like chemical totes in there and a wagon that carries fertilizer. <laughs> Now, at any point on the day that this happened on November 10th, 2018, did you ever see anybody other than your mom, your dad, and your brothers and sisters on the farm? Yes. Who else? Uh, I'm sorry. Before this happened? Oh, no. You indicated um, a minute ago that at some point you saw other people? When? Did you under... I'm, I'll just rephrase my question. I apologize. When you and your mom and your dad were out in the barn, at any point, did you see anybody else on the farm? Oh, no, no. Did you hear anybody else on the farm? No. After your mom went to get the pet carrier, did you hear anybody else on the farm? No. Did you see any trucks or hear anything, hear anybody else on the farm? No. And after you went home, um, after this happened, at that point there was some police and some other family members that came over. Yeah. What time do you think you worked outside until, until you found your mom? About what time? Now, Tristan, I want to ask you a little bit um, about when you were, um, prior to this happening, you would, um, did you have your own bedroom at the farm? Yes. 
Would you sleep in your bedroom? No. Why not? Uh, just because, you know, it's downstairs, and uh, it's kind of my, I'm the only room downstairs, and it just was kind of lonely, I guess. I just slept upstairs. And where would you sleep at your house? In the living room. Would you sleep on a couch? Yes. And would your dad generally also sleep in that same room? Yes. And would that be on a separate couch? Yes. And do you know why your dad slept on that couch? Um, because, like, he had back problems, I know. And, um, like, there was a certain, like, inclinement that he would sleep in, and it would make his, it wouldn't hurt his back. And so, um, he just kind of slept on that. Now, did your dad have an iPad? Yes. And where would you, where would your dad keep that iPad? Um, there was like a little, like a little kind of a rectangular box kind of thing. It was like a gift that he had gotten, I think, and he would keep it in that beside the couch. Now, let me back up a minute. Did you have any type of device at this time back in November 2018 or around that time? Did you have a phone or an iPad? Yes. Uh, what did you have? I had a phone and I had a Kindle or whatever you want to call it. And did... T uh, Taylor or Wyatt have any type of devices? Yes. What did they have? Taylor had a cell phone as well, and um, they both had a Kindle. And what did your, what if anything, did your mom have, like, type of device? She had a cell phone. Um, she had a Kindle as well. And was there a family laptop or computer that you all used? Yes. And where was that device or that, it was, a, was it a laptop? Yeah. Where was that usually kept? Um... It was generally kept kind of next to a door that led out to the deck, but we, um, it was like, it was kind of in the kitchen vicinity. And it generally stayed in the kitchen area? Yes. Now, this iPad that was your dad's, field or in the tractor or to use it around the farm? Yes. And was there a code to get into this iPad? Yes. Are you aware of what that password was? Yes. Did you, did you yourself ever use that iPad? Yes. When did you use that iPad? Maybe, um, like once, I think, to look up something for Dad, or I think one of those, I can't remember, but I know I did use it a couple times, but it was just to look up stuff. Now, during your deposition last week, you were asked if you ever used that iPad, correct? Yes. And during that deposition, you said you never used it? Yes. But today, you're saying that you have used it? Yes. And do you recall when that was? No. Do you know what year it was? 2018. Did you ever see your mom use that iPad? No. Did you ever see Taylor use that iPad? No. Did you ever see Wyatt use that iPad? No. Now, Tristan, did you know a, kind of a lot about your mom and dad's relationship? Yeah. Were you aware? My mom say that, yes, I had an affair. And then several years later, a couple months before your mother's death, mm -hmm. did you ever, well, let me say, in, in about the summer to fall of 2018, before your mother's death, do you remember a time when you came home from school and your mom was really upset? Yes. Do you remember specifically when that was? Um... I can give you an estimate. It was probably August, late August. You remember you were in school? Yes. And when you came home, what did you observe about your mother? She was just kind of upset, and she just, I don't know, she was just upset. And did she do anything with, with you? Did she hug you or kiss you? Yeah. And then that same day, did you go outside? Yes. And did you then have a conversation with your dad? Yes. Was anybody else, was it anybody besides you and your dad that day? No. And what, if anything, did your dad say to you during that conversation? He just said that, you know, Mom was upset today, and we got in an argument, and it was just about what was going on, and she just kind of got upset about it. Well, when you say what was going on, your dad actually told you that your mom was talking to another man? Yes. During that conversation? Yes. 
And Tristan, was there another time that you were also with your dad around this same time where he was talking to you about his relationship with your mother? Yes. And what were you and your dad doing at that time? Uh, I don't remember. Do you remember saying in your deposition that you were burning something or that your oh, dad might have been yes. burning something? Yes, yes. Do you know what your dad was burning? It's just trash. And what did your dad say to you during that conversation? Uh, he just said that, you know, he just said, you know, have you noticed anything with mom? You know, is she getting grumpy or is she upset with you guys? Is she, um, you know, is she like texting a lot? So you talked about your mom and dad's relationship? Yes. Now, after this happened on November 10th, 2018, after you learned about your mom's passing, did yes. you ever go out to the Red Shed yourself? Yes. And for what purpose did you go out there? Um, you know, I just wanted to see what happened. And how many times would you say you went out there? Two, three times. Now, Tristan, you said earlier that you're staying currently with your grandma and grandpa in Ankeny. Yes. And that's your mom's mother and um, stepdad. stepdad, right? Yes. Have you ever talked to them about the facts from that from this day? No. And did they did they tell you or did anybody else in your mom's family tell you what to say today? No. And in fact, um, when, after you hired an attorney, your attorney told you not to talk to anybody about this other than when you're testifying. Yes. Tristan, at any point on November 10th, 2018, prior to you, to you finding your mother, did you see Taylor and Wyatt outside? No. So you saw nobody else outside but you, your mom, and your dad? Yes. And Tristan, did you do anything to hurt your mom that day? No. You were never with your mom in the red shed until you actually found her? Yes. I have nothing further at this time, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Firehelm, go ahead. Your Honor. Um, I know it's only 1135, but with some of the changes we've heard about during this testimony and the fact that we're split up from Mr. Sabres, I think I could do it much more efficient time-wise if I had a chance to review notes and talk to him and get these exhibits lined up. You want to take a lunch break now? I, I think it would be less confusing and, and more productive if we did that. Okay, we can do that. Typically, we break for lunch around noon. It's 25 minutes to 12. So, folks, we'll take our lunch break at this point in time. Remember the admonition I've given you before. Same rules apply. Keep an open mind and don't draw any conclusions. Um, we'll take until about uh, 12.45. We'll give you about an hour and 10 minutes for lunch. Report back to the jury room. Okay? Okay.